Today I'm going to talk about the LSP setup for Emacs. In the previous video I showcased some of the capabilities of LSP. Um, it was just a way for me to show like how your your workflow could uh, look like if you use the tool. Maybe you, I mean, encourage people to give it a shot. Uh, so for today I'm going to go through the setup. Um, I do remember saying that I didn't encounter too many problems and that's still the case. I think the, the setup is straightforward, but regardless, I want to talk about, I mean, what dependencies you need to have in your, in your system and some of the things that you need to look for whenever you have some problems. So let's just uh, get right into it. So for your distribution, you need to have Clang D installed, which is the server for C and C++. Um, depending on your language, for instance, if you're using JavaScript, uh, maybe, I don't know if it's turned the server that they use for JavaScript. Like I said, um, it, it depends on the language that you're trying to set up. If you guys need me to do some language in specific, I can do a video about it. Uh, but but again, it, it shouldn't be too much of a hassle because at the end of the day, the server is just going to do its thing and LSP is going to connect to it. And maybe you need to do something specific for some server, but it shouldn't be that much of a problem. But again, if needed, I, I can do a video in a different language. So for C and C++, you, I mean, I do recommend Clang D. There is also CCLS, but I don't personally recommend this option. I use it for a bit, but um, I don't know. I, I didn't like it uh, overall. So it's going to be Clang D for me. So that's it. That's pretty much all you need from your like operating system perspective. This is going to depend on what distribution you use. I think that Debian um, uses a different set of packages for both the, the Clang uh, compiler and the Clang like tool tools, extra tools. So maybe there are two different packages that you need to install. That's going to depend on you. You need to look for, for those in your distribution. Um, but, but that's all you need. For the Emacs side of things, um, you need to install LSP mode and projectile. I don't remember if LSP has projectile listed as a dependency. I already had projectile installed because I use it in my workflow. Regardless of LSP, there are some functions that I use all the time. But if you, I mean, if it's not listed as a dependency, I do recommend that you install it as well. And that's that these are the only things that you need to have installed in order to make this work. Optionally, I do recommend using company box. I mean, this is not like entirely related to LSP. This just gives you a nicer output on the candidate leads that company uh, generates. Like it tells you with an icon, whether it's a function or a symbol. Again, it's just, I think it's cool and it doesn't affect performance. Uh, I, at least I haven't encountered like issues with it. And there's also LSP IB. Just, I mean, if you're already using IB, you might as well just use it as well with LSP. If not, I mean, again, this is not needed, but uh, I, I think it, it does help specifically with the feature that I that I showcase that lets you just query in the whole project for symbols. I think that's super useful. And that's pretty much all you need. Uh, I think all of this is available through, through Melpa, as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna, you know, clarify in the description if that's not the case, but as, I mean, as far as I know, that they're in, in either Elpa or Melpa. Not, not sure. I'll mention it. So that's about it for the things that you need to have installed. Let me open a project real quick. Now, this project has already been like uh, indexed by by LSP. It's already connected uh, to the server in this case, Clang D. So there's not too much problem. I want to show you. Um, once you start generating like LSP sessions, this file is going to get created instead of, uh, you know, in your home dot emacs dot D uh, LSP session V1. Now we don't need to understand what, what this really means. All you need to know is like, for instance, this path is a project and it's going to do something with it. It can generate the hashes. I'm not sure. But let's say that there is a problem whenever LSP try to load your project. Maybe some symbols are all messed up. I don't know. You have some problems and you need to, you know, re-index your project from a, like in a different way. So what we can do is let's just, you know, um, delete that file. 
so how I was P yeah there we go so I'm just gonna you know restart Emacs real quick now let me open again the project so that you can see that uh, LSP is going to detect that you try to open a project and I'm, I'm not sure if this is LSP or projectile whatever it is uh, it's going to detect that it's either a git project or however you want I mean you have it set it up and it's going to ask you where the root of the project I mean the root path of the project is um, I have everything in the I mean every bit of the source code in it uh, but let's say that I have a different path. For instance, I said I set it to S S D L, and this is gonna be my my root directory. So because of that, this is not gonna work properly with my symbols. In fact, if you if you look at the top of the screen, it's gonna tell me that this symbol is not being found because the the root of the project was not set properly. Um, you need to use uh, a, a file called compile commands JSON, and this needs to be set up at the level of the of the root of the project. So if you have it set it up in a different place, and Clang cannot, I mean LSP cannot find it, and it cannot be sent to to you know Clang D or whatever. So it's all messed up. In that particular case, we we actually need to you need to have that file in the in the root directory of your project. So again, if you need to reset that, I don't know. I mean, maybe there is a better way. But personally, I think that just removing this file that I mentioned, the LSP one, and I'm just gonna restart Emacs. Right. I'm gonna open the project again. You know, a random file. And then I'm just gonna set the root to what I what it actually is, and you can see that it doesn't display any errors or any linking uh, warnings that you need to look for. So just to demonstrate one more time, here in the compiler's command JSON, I'm gonna comment this out, and then I'm gonna restart the workspace. And as soon as I do that, you can tell that this header is not being found and uh, it's giving me some errors for the base path, whatever it is. Maybe it's not finding the appropriate paths for my custom headers. I'm not sure. All you need to know is that you need to set it up. I'm going to talk about more deeply, I mean, more more, uh, more about more about this uh, compile commands thing. I'm going to close it for now, and then I'm going to restart the workspace again. And there we go. It's not, you know, tell me, like, uh, it's not giving me a lot of, uh, you know, errors anymore. So this is entirely related to 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 Clang. You need to have the compiles command JSON that I was talking about um, here in the. I mean, I'm gonna leave a link to this as well. Uh, here it it says that in case that you need something specific set up, for instance, I personally have all the source code for the SDL library in my project. I just like working this way. It's better for me personally. Um, so in my compile commands JSON, I need to pass the the location for that source code so that I can just, you know, include the header like this. So I need to include that in the compile commands JSON. If you're using CMake, then it this can get generated automatically for you, but I just because I don't use CMake, then um, I don't know. I can I can I can't really talk about this. But if you look at this, uh, there is a specification. So again, this is the basic you know like format that you need to follow: the directory of your project, the command with all of your flags and fancy stuff that you're using, and the and the file entry for your you know your your program and that's it that's really all you need to have this working with with uh with all the tools and, and stuff that i showed um just a super you know side note now that i'm talking about it you might as well just give it a shot for uh for client format i mean if you're already you know working with this tool you have it available so what i mean by that is that you can have i don't know some funky indentation in here. Uh, let me delete this. 
maybe there's a lot of spaces in here. Um, if I call like say buffer directly, it's not gonna do anything. But I have like a hook set up for um, for I mean for it to use Clang format. And as, I, as soon as I do that, then this gets identified directly. Um, again, this this works like a charm. You do need to do a little bit of setup. I mean, it's gonna take you something like half an hour to get uh, this to your specific uh, needs. This, these are all of the flags that you need to set. You can, you know, uh, you can go through the documentation, and there are examples for you. I mean, for you to do it exactly as you want it. Um, so one more thing that you need to do is um, have, I mean, add the LSP mode to the hook of your, you know, of the language that you, I mean, of the files that you're going to be working with. For instance, I'm going to work with uh, C and C++, right? So um, so you need to add a hook. Let me show you how that looked like. So this is the way I do it. I'm not saying that this is the best or the worst. I just do it this way. I have a development uh, function, which is just uh, a set of uh, modes that I add uh, for a specific, uh, you know, major modes like Emacs list, JavaScript, and C++. And C++. Um, let me show you how that function looks like. It's nothing, you know, it's, it's not fancy at all. So I just have all of the things that I have, uh, you know, I, I enable whenever I'm, I'm coding and one of them being LSP. And this is basically all you need. Again, I, I think it's super, um, I think it's a straightforward, but again, if you do encounter problems or you want to, uh, I mean, you have, you know, questions or something that you want to ask me, just leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, thank you so much for watching.